<clears throat> Hello, everyone. Welcome to um, Higher Things Bible Study. Finishing off John today. Don't mind the whiteboard in the background or the random things. This is the multi-purpose room right now in the Fanker household. I'm Pastor Aaron Fanker, if you don't know. Um, the, uh, the presence, this is the present hiding room. The kids' presents are over there. Don't tell them. And uh, so things are sort of moved about. And then there's this giant whiteboard right here because I had to zoom into class uh, yesterday, so I had a I had to move a whiteboard over here. So yeah, this is the multi-purpose room. I will not be using the whiteboard today, as fun as that would be. Um. So yes, John twenty-one, and I know Pastor Borkart went to oh twenty-one nineteen, but I I kind of want a running start. Maybe he anticipated that I was was going to do that. So. Without any further ado, let's get to the text. Um, and when they uh, finished breakfast, Jesus says to Simon Peter, definitely, uh, it's like John was there overhearing the conversation. Uh, Simon, um, son of John, uh, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? And he said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He says to him, uh, feed my lambs, my little lambs. Hmm. Uh, he says to him again, a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He says to him, uh, f uh, shepherd my lambs, my sheep. And then he says to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Uh, John or Peter, was sorrowful because uh, he said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he says to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus says to him, uh, t uh, Feed uh, my sheep. Um, and where was I? My screen was flickering. I hope we're okay. That would be weird. Um, Peter said, uh, third time, uh, you know, truly, truly, I say to you, when you were a young man, you dressed yourself and walked wherever you wished. But when you're old, uh, you, they will take you by the hand and another will, uh, and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. Uh, this he said uh, to show by what kind of death he would glorify God. Um, and after saying this, he said to him, he says to him, follow me. Uh, so here, uh, so many people make much of uh, the varying words of love that, um, that Jesus uses here in the Gospel of John. And... Um, the, the problem is, John's using synonyms, and Peter isn't even offended by the fact that Jesus switches his word for love at the end. He's offended, or not offended, sorrowful, uh, because Jesus asks him three times. That's the thing that gets, gets Peter. And if we really want to consider this difference between... Um, Agape and uh, philos, um, the two types of love Jesus uses, uh, uh, you know, selfless love and kind of friendship love, brotherly love. Within the Christian life, they're one and the same. Let brotherly love increase. Uh, I believe Peter and Paul both say within their letters. So, you know, there really is no difference between them. Um, I just don't, based on that and the way that the, the text flows, that Peter isn't like, oh, he switched words on me. Um, 
it, it just doesn't doesn't flow with the text because um, uh, yeah let's see where is it <laughs> uh, do you know yes he was grieved that he said to him the third time do you love me and the question is posed there like that Jesus as if Jesus asked the question three times with the word phileo which is where we get friendship or brotherly love so there's really no it's just John doing a John thing, which is sort of pulling all these words in together so that um, they, they're, they're synonyms, they're equivalents. And this is what we see throughout the, the epistle of 1 John, that love towards God and love towards neighbor is sort of the same thing. If you have, you know, this self-giving love, directed which should be directed towards god you should love the lord your god with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself john uses these terms interchangeably um the both words are filled with the meaning of the other one so well i don't have to you know he's just having me show brotherly love not this you know agape love towards others and then john would look at you and would be like what that doesn't make any sense Yes, all the loves, there's one love. God is love, self-giving love. And then even he is um, brotherly love. It's all the same. Um, those are these two words for love. And we, I mean, I know there's much that we can learn from the different you know, ways that we normally talk about love in the New Testament. I mean, uh, C.S. Lewis has a work on that, on the types of love. Uh, all I mean, and that could be helpful in some sense. But here we start, I think we also start seeing that we start equating these things. That the love of God, the selfless love of God, affects our love for our brother, for our neighbor. So that um, to agape is the same as to fillet it's it's all the same when it comes to to jesus and the christian life there, there's no other way that it that the lord works faith toward god love towards neighbor we sort of use you know even there ha ha i'm going to become large again even there in the post-communion colic we use faith towards god and love towards one another so there we've used completely two different words because faith is the is the uh, is love towards God. So we use these alternate terms, even though we would say, well, we're to love the Lord your God, which is faith, um, and then love towards neighbor. But if you wanted to use the same word, um, you know, do you love me? You, you might start then nuancing it with, you know, slightly different words well what's the difference between them well just kind of who they're directed towards i mean at, at the end of the day what does it matter that's just anyway just trying to go with the flow of the text here that that what what peter goes with what gets Peter sort of sorrowful, the reminder of sort of you know, the third time is a reminder of his three denials of Jesus. Um, but what gets him is the third time, not the fact that Jesus finally switches what word for love he uses. Um, Peter doesn't get tripped up by that. Um, but here we see what Jesus does. What does Jesus do uh, for those who are faithless? He remains faithful. That's Jesus. That's the Jesus you have. That's the Jesus Peter has. That Jesus is the type who goes to a Peter and says, you denied me three times. I'm going to restore you three times. Technically four. Always one more. Always more with the Lord. More restoration with the Lord than we have denial. So Peter denies him three times. And three times he tells him, feed my sheep. And then he says, follow me one more time always more giving more mercy with the lord that's the type of lord we have um he 
yes. Feed my sheep three times in various ways. Um, and then one more, follow me. The original um, call that Jesus gives to Peter in the Gospels. So we have, yeah, always, oh, mm, more giving. What, what Jesus do we have? The merciful Jesus. Um, but Peter, as is Peter's way, let's see how Peter puts his foot in his mouth yet again. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them, the one who had leaned back against him during the supper and said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, If it's my will that he remain until, my, until I come, um, what is that to you? Uh, you follow me. Therefore this word went out amongst the brothers that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die, but... If I will him to remain until I come, what is that to you? So Peter, everyone's trying to always find out where the other disciples stand. Where do they fit in? This one whom you love. Well, you've said to follow me, but he's following us right now. Oh, John's eavesdropping on Peter and Jesus. And so Peter's like, well, what about this? What about this character over here? The youngest of us. What about him? Uh, how will he glorify you? And Jesus is like, that's not for you to know. That's what he's basically saying. You know, if I if I were to will for him to live forever on this earth, what what why do you care? It's not a matter of of you how you Peter compare to John, or how you Peter compare to a Paul, or how you Peter compare to anybody else. Um, it's I'm saving you. I'm drawing you to myself. And that guy over there, if I will that he remains until the end of the world, what is that to you? And so then there's that rumor. That's always good. Um, well, Jesus, you know, well, he's not going to die. As if that's the point. The point is, it's none of our biz. It's none of our beeswax. What happens to the other disciples? Doesn't matter what happens after we're dead. That's kind of what Peter wants to know. Because Peter's like, well, I'm old. I'm already old. Probably the oldest of the the, the apostles. Um, and Jesus, is like, when you're old, you're gonna. This is what's gonna happen. Peter's like, well, I'm kind of already there. So what about this young guy? What's gonna happen after I'm gone? What's the legacy of all this? And we're not given to know that. We're given to rejoice in what the Lord gives to us. Whatever that is, whatever our time is, whatever our ending is, the Lord is gracious and merciful. Look at a Peter. Um, four times restoration. Even one more. But you follow me. So one more. Peter, it's like, he, he, he goes off on his own. Denies Jesus three times. Jesus restores him three times and then says, follow me. Fourth time. Then Peter's like, well, what about this guy over here? And it's like, Jesus is like, what did I just tell you? But did you, that's not what Jesus does. That's what we would do. We would do like the face palm with Peter or something. And like, really? Like how much more? Well, there's always more with the Lord. Uh, no, you follow me. He doesn't say, okay, that was enough. No more, Peter. Off on your own now, since that's kind of what you like to do. Not with Jesus. And so we too, we rejoice in what the Lord gives us. Abundant mercy. Uh, forgiveness for all the times we come up short. That's the sort of Jesus we have. And he keeps us as his own. Whether we die young or die old or die first or die last, it... And, it doesn't matter because we are the Lord's and the Lord is ours. He makes sure of that. I forgot to put the text up. It keeps flashing on my screen. I don't know if it does on yours, but we only got a few verses left. 
Uh, this is the disciple who's bearing witness about these things and who has written these things. And we know that his uh, witness, that true is his witness. And um, there are many other things which Jesus did, which um, if they would be written one by one, um, uh, would not be the world would not be able to contain uh, the books uh, that would be written. Yeah, if they were written out, kathen uh, one by one. Um, so every one of them, that's fine, but it's sort of like, you know. Yeah, one by if you're to take the time to list them all out, we couldn't we couldn't do this. So this is what this is. Here it again is the witness. John is the the witness, the testifier of who Jesus is. And he's written these things. And and John pulls in I don't quite know what this we is all about. Uh, I've often wondered that. Hmm. I have to. I always think about that more. But there's, there's always this collegiality amongst the the witnesses. So Peter or Peter, uh, Peter does do it in his in his in his letters. Uh, first Peter. Uh, it's in First Peter and also Second Peter uh, that Peter and Silvanus. Or you get letters from Paul and Timothy, or Paul and Luke, or, or however you want to do it. Um, there's the messengers of the gospel that um, hold to the true witness, that deliver what witness? The witness of Jesus. What he has done. That is, he's died and risen. That's our witness. Um... You are witnesses of these things, Jesus says. And John is like, I'm one of those witnesses. I saw it. We know this. Um, we know this from, uh, like at the crucifixion, that um, <clears throat> John describes Jesus being crucified. Um, there was a, one there and one there, and Jesus was in the middle as opposed to right and left. John's gospel is written from first-person perspective, um, or at least written in such a way that the information is, could only come from somebody who was there. So also this conversation, right, between Jesus and Peter, um, you get this idea that the disciple whom Jesus loves, John, is sort of waiting in the wings, eavesdropping. And... Uh, to write his, his, his gospel. And his witness is true. True is. So truth comes first, emphasizing it. We know what the truth of his witness or something like that. Hmm. Yeah, it wouldn't quite be like that, but that's fine. Um, Jesus did many other things. And, and here, oh, ah, uh, the Roman, Roman Catholics love to do this, um, which is where they get the idea of tradition. Um, see, there's many other things that were said and preached, and that's been passed down, and that, so we have that. But that's not what John's doing here. John's just saying, you know, of all the things that I could write, I, I had to pick something, because if you really were to look at it and try and list it out, um, every one of them, or list them out, kathen, one by one, well, well, that'd be impossible. There'd be too many books. Because, you know, the events that are described in the Gospels, I mean, the best we can, you know, Jesus' ministry is, what, three years? It's almost like a thousand days. A thousand days of things happened. And... I mean, we're just, what we can tell is that Jesus was doing something every day. Every day something was happening. 
with Jesus. He's up to something for a thousand days. And, you know, what we're described in the Gospels is just a handful of them. I mean, if you were to think out, like, sometimes there's, there's lots of detail over what happens in a day. And you go, like, that's just one day. Multiply that by a thousand. And, well, look, what would you be able to do? But what John's here is not trying to, to dive into that. What we have is the testimony John gives. And he writes what he writes, not so that we would wonder, like, or it's trying to seek out what are the other things Jesus said and did. Well, these things are written so that you would believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that by believing you would have life in his name. That's why the whole gospel's written. That this one book, if we were to write it all out, this would be one volume amongst countless more. That just this one book is, uh, for lack of a better word, enough for you to believe that Jesus is your Savior, that Jesus is the Christ, and that by believing in Him you have life in His name. Just this one book of the countless that could be written. So there's no need to look for, for other words of God in any other place. Whether you try and look at your experience or your emotion or what you know or don't know or what's been passed down to you, all that matters is what's written of Jesus. And one gospel, one, even one chapter, even one verse. Um, well, they didn't have verse numbers when they wrote, or chapters. Take that for what it's worth. Uh, take this then with a grain of salt for, for kind of what, what I'm trying to say is that of, of the countless books that could be written this one, just one if you were to read one, only one it would be enough for the Spirit to create faith in Jesus in you what if you only had one chapter even that would be enough for the Spirit to create and sustain faith in Jesus and I'd Fathom to say, you know, depending on the, you know, the one verse, you know, what, what can the Spirit do? One verse or fragment of a verse remembered. Um, what confidence we can have, even in, um, like, confirmation verses, for example. You know, so often, old-time confirmation verses, lots of, mm, lots of legalism. And, and trying to, like, bolster someone's, you know, activity or whatever. But a well-chosen confirmation verse, one full of comfort, well, that's enough for the Spirit to sustain you the, the entire rest of your life. You know, what if you have a, a confirmation verse of, you know, a John 3.16? Or... A Romans 1 16 like as a, in my case I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation for all who believe first for the Jew and then for the Gentile or a Psalm 27 1 the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear so that of all the countless books that can be written even that one verse that one verse, even, even one word, to tell us, die, it is finished. Even that one word, spirit-filled word, that word is, a spirit-filled word, <clears throat> spirit, word, spirit drew out of John, who was there to hear it. Spirit draws this out, causing them to remember all things that Jesus said. That one word, spirit-filled word, to fill you with the spirit. To rejoice in what Jesus has done. The Christ. For you. The, uh, and that by believing you have life in Jesus. Oh, that's a, an amazing conclusion to an amazing gospel now, isn't it? An amazing story of Jesus' preaching. 
who he is. God for you. Um, God for you. God, <clears throat> word became flesh and dwelt among us. The true bridegroom has come. The, the creator, so the true bridegroom, the um, water into wine, the, the baptizer, um, the one who seeks and saves the lost, even a Samaritan woman, the one who, um, who feeds thousands. John 6, he is the bread of life, the one who is the light of the world, the one who is the good shepherd, the one who is the gate of the sheep, the one who is the resurrection and the life, um, <clears throat> the one who, who cleanses his disciples, the one who is the vine and you are the branches, the one who sends the Spirit, the one who is um, betrayed for you, uh, crucified for you, raised for you, the one who sends you a preacher to forgive you your sins, the one who um, restores even those who deny him three times. Always more restoration with him. That story. This, that story, John 1 through John 21. Of all the countless other books that could be written, that one book will save you. One chapter will save you. One word, to Tetelestai, it'll save you because it's written... The Spirit drew it out of John so that you would believe in Jesus. And that by believing in Him, you would have eternal life in His name. I hope you enjoyed the Gospel of John. I enjoyed it the first the couple times that I came in. And with that, I'm, started, I'm ending a little early, but I've got nothing else to say. Amazingly enough. Um, so I hope that the Lord Jesus would... Um, has blessed your study of his gospel of John and um, that the Lord Jesus would bless you uh, the rest of your day by keeping you within his own baptismal mercy and favor. Amen.